I'm uh, so glad to see everyone today, and uh, thank you for coming. My name is Jason Little. I'd like to welcome everybody to our Reverend Jimmy Terry preaching series for the month of August. Welcome to everyone who's watching us uh, online or over televisions and our other entities across the system. And I would, uh, I'd love to open us with a word of prayer. Would you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your blessings, which are new each day. We give you thanks for uh, Baptist and this organization and for all these colleagues and visitors and patients who have uh, gathered and are listening today. Father, we just pray that uh, you would use uh, Anthony uh, so that we could hear a word just afresh and new from you that might prick our hearts. Father, but I, I pray for what's going on, not here just only in this meeting, but all throughout our hospitals and facilities. I pray for the caregivers. I pray for the patients, uh, that your healing and your spirit would just be pervasive in our midst and that everywhere care is delivered, it would be for your honor and your glory. Uh, bless this food now, the rest of our bodies. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, well, thanks again for coming. Like I said, I, I wanted to just um, highlight uh, one of the things that Anthony normally does when he's not the speaker, and I'll get to that in a minute, but one of the things that he does is highlight one of our uh, pastoral care ministry moments to, to highlight, highlight one of our ministries throughout the system. And so today it would just be to highlight our daily devotionals. Uh, Anthony Burdick and our other chaplains throughout the system work very hard to prepare devotionals uh, that are available to you uh, uh, via your email for delivery each morning. And uh, if you're not getting those, I promise you they are a blessing and I would submit them for your review. Uh, for you just to, uh, you can submit a uh, request. Let's see, do I have an email address? I don't, but uh, just send Anthony Burdick a note and uh, or your uh, chaplain there, wherever entity you are, and you can get signed up to receive uh, a devotional, and I can promise you that you will be blessed. I'm grateful for all the behind-the-scenes work that happens every day to proclaim uh, the name of Jesus in our midst and to bless all those uh, who receive it. But what I wanted to do now is introduce our speaker and let him uh, get on to speaking to us. Uh, we have one of our own today. You know, uh, Reverend Anthony Burdick has worked so hard over the last two years uh, to really uh, prepare for this uh, Jimmy Terry preaching series each month to, uh, to bring us just the right person that God has in mind to deliver a message for us. And today is no different. We've got just the right person uh, because Anthony's going to deliver that message himself. Anthony Burdick has worked for Baptist Memorial Healthcare for 25 years now and um, serving as our system director of pastoral care currently. He leads that team all across our system. And when you think about it, wherever your church or place of worship is, you will have a senior pastor, no doubt, that's in charge of shepherding a number of folks. But when you think about the responsibilities that fall to our team of chaplains and to Anthony in particular, you're talking 18,000 uh, employees plus hundreds of thousands of patients who come here looking for spiritual guidance. And uh, I am so grateful that all of that uh, falls to uh, someone who is so very capable. Uh, and that's our system director of pastoral care. His wife Libby is here today, somewhere in the audience. Libby, are you, where are you? I saw, there she is. Um, a good back row Baptist up there. Um, <laughs> But she's always uh, front and center in supporting her, uh, her husband and in all he does and his time here at Baptist. So Libby, we thank you. And without any further ado, let me introduce Anthony Burrick. Anthony. Thank you, Jason. And, and thank you all for coming out today and for those of you who are watching uh, across our system. It really is a, a privilege to be able to break open God's word with, with my Baptist family today. Uh, this is something I've looked forward to ever since I realized that, it was, that I was going to get a turn to do this. And, uh, and I'm glad that today is the two-year anniversary. It's hard to believe we've been uh, providing the Reverend Jimmy Terry Preaching Series for two whole years now. And we've heard a lot of great messages. And so uh, my prayer is that the Lord will speak through me today. I'm, I'm sharing some verses today. One of the verses that I'm going to look at today is absolutely one of my favorites, and that's, that's the second point of my 
two-point message. Uh, usually preachers have three-point sermons with a hymn at the end or something like that. I know I don't have a whole lot of time, so it's a two-point. So uh, get ready. Hold on fast. Listen quick. Uh, the, the, just to get started, uh, this time of year I'm mindful of the fact that you don't have to drive very far to see fields that are starting to really grow. The corn stalks are getting tall. Some of them are already almost as tall as me. You know, the, the bean fields are, are coming in, the cotton's uh, turning green. It's not blooming yet, but uh, you know, not, it, it won't be too much longer before that happens. Uh, out where, where Libby and I live, we've got some woods behind our house and, and behind those woods is a, a, a piece of farmland and, and we're always interested, I am at least every year, to look and see what that farmer is going to put in the ground that year. Uh, it, it's, it's really, I, I, I'm not a farmer. Uh, most of the time plants come to my house to die. I am not a, I don't have a green thumb, you know, and, and uh, they, they really do. I, but, but I'm fascinated with, with the way that, that farmers produce uh, the crops. You know, uh, the, the fruits of their labors are going to be realized before too much longer. You know, the harvest time's just around the corner. All the, the planting and fertilizing and planting and, and the things that go into that are going to bear fruit before we know it. Um, and then once the crop has been produced, they start making plans for next year. They decide what they're going to plant in which, whichever fields. Uh, they decide that some fields are going to remain fallow, uh, that they're going to let those fields rest for a year or two. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's really fascinating to me. Scripture is full of farming analogies and, and agricultural analogies. In Scripture, we hear that Christ is the vine and we are the branches. Uh, we, we see the Lord referred to as the master gardener. Uh, and we are taught that we must bear spiritual fruit. Now, uh, those metaphors are, are, are all through Scripture. Uh, today, I want us to look at two places, two such places in Scripture. And I want us to do two things as we do this. As we think about uh, the theme, it's all about Jesus. I want us to think about our own lives and ask the question, is my life all about Jesus? And in order to do that, these two passages that we're going to look at today are going to help us examine the condition of our hearts and see where and how our hearts need to be reconditioned. So I want to start with Luke chapter 8, a very familiar parable. And uh, let me read this to you in Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 4. It says, While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it, and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. And when he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. A little further down in verse 11, Jesus goes on with his disciples, and he says, This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and when the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they, and the devil comes and takes the word away from their hearts, so that they will not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a little while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on the good soil, that stands for those who have a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Jesus, the master teacher, used this parable to challenge folks to examine themselves. And he's still using it today to challenge us to examine ourselves. All the people in his audience in that day were very familiar with the importance of agriculture. 
Their lives depended on it. They were a lot closer to the critical nature of agriculture than we are today. Some of the people in his audience, no doubt, were farmers themselves. They understood what he was saying. And Jesus makes this parable clear in terms of its meaning because he actually interprets it for us. This is one of those neat places in scripture where Jesus says, and here's what I mean by that. He tells us that there are four types of soil, hard, rocky, thorny, and good. There's one seed, the word of God. There's one farmer, the Lord himself, trying to plant his word in our hearts. He tells us that the hard soil is impenetrable. Impenetrable, sorry. The word can't get through this kind of heart. It can't change it, and it has no effect until the Holy Spirit comes and breaks it open. The rocky soil, the second soil, is full of things other than good dirt. The word comes to this heart but doesn't take root. This heart is too caught up in other things to be fully committed to the Lord for any length of time. The thorny soil is full of distractions. This heart is torn between the word of God and the influences and cares of this world. And then the good soil is the soil that's waiting for the word to be planted. This heart may have been hard in the past. It may have been full of rocks or weeds in the past. But, but when the word comes, it's ready to receive it and apply it and bear fruit. So which one of these souls represents your heart today? Now clearly, a person with a hard soul, you know, Jesus talks about that person as being lost and, and not saved. But I wanna suggest to you too that there, if you're not spending time in God's word in any regular way at all, then you too may have some hardness in the soil of your heart. If you're at the point where you rarely ever open the word or study it or try to understand what God is telling you in it, your heart's probably got some hard soil. There are places in your heart where you're not letting the Lord get into. Now, maybe your heart, maybe you love to hear the word on Sundays or on these one, once a month uh, preaching series. Now, I'm not going to get to meddling now. But, uh, you know, you, 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 you may like to hear a, a good sermon on the radio or on TV or on a podcast, you know, and, and you listen to it and you enjoy it, but you don't take anything away from it. You know, if that's the case, then uh, if it's not changing the way you behave, you've probably got rocky soil. There may be some parts of your life that are full of good soil where you've got it all together, but you know there's that one field, that one place, or maybe a couple of places in your life that you're just not letting the Lord get into at all. You know, that, uh, and, and you've got some problem areas. You don't want to, you know you ought to do something about it, but you're just not willing to take those rocks out of your life. You're just going to keep them, and, and it's comfortable to have those rocks there. Or if, if you're like me, I, I find myself in the third category a lot, and that's the thorny soul, the the, the heart, the life that's full of distractions, running in a thousand directions, you know, big system. We got a lot of fires to put out. We got a lot of things that come, come across our desk, you know, all kinds of crazy things. And, and, and you know, the, there are things going on in our families and with our kids' school and with grandkids if we have them and, and all kinds of things, all kinds of distractions that have us running. And these are good things. Nothing wrong with them. But, you know, if we've got really the thorny soul with all these distractions, what we'll find is, that's true is we're the ones managing it, not God. If I'm the one managing everything, then I've got thorny soul. My heart is, is I'm in charge of too much of it, and God's not in charge of all of it. That's thorny soul. And, and, and you know, it, it's real easy to get there. It's especially in our day, there are so many things to distract us and to take our eyes off the Lord. Now, if the Lord isn't in charge of everything, then you've got thorny soul. Now, the last soul that he talks about is the good soul. You know, there are, there are times in our lives when, 
when we've had the hard soul, we've had the rocky soul, we've had the thorny soul, and, and we fully, there are times when, when we may be fully surrendered to God in such a way that everything we do, he has say over. He is the complete Lord over our lives. If that's the case, then we've got the good soul. God's fully in charge. And that's not impossible. That does, that does happen for us. Right? And when, that's, when, when we have the good soul through and through in our lives, that's when we're really producing fruit. Now, I know that I work with people who produce good fruit. I know all over our system, we have folks that make a huge difference in people's lives. So as you're examining the soil of your heart and what God has done to change you, to make you a more productive minister in whatever role he's called you to be, I want you to know today that he uses all of us to produce good fruit. I see it all the time, all kinds of things. And I heard a story the other day about a doctor giving his shoes to a patient. Whoa, you know, when stuff like that happens, man, you know you've got a good family. You know you're, you know you're surrounded by people who are, who are bearing fruit, who are putting others before themselves. But you know, even the best of soils has to be broken open from time to time. It, it has to be prepared before it can be planted and before it can bear fruit. Once we know the condition of our hearts, whatever level, you know, wherever you are, once you know the condition of your heart, that's the time when you have to say, Lord, come on in and do a work in me. Even with that good soul, he's got to come in and, and, and cultivate that soul and break it open. So that, that takes me to the, the second point, the idea of reconditioning our hearts and that takes me to one of my absolute favorite verses in all of Scripture. Every once in a while when I sign a Bible that I'm giving to somebody or sign a book when I'm giving to somebody, I'll reference Hosea 10.12, which says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap the fruit of unfailing love, and here it is, and break open your unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. Unplowed ground. Unplowed ground. You know, I could have the best soil in the world, but if it's but if it's not plowed, if it's not planted, it's never gonna bear anything. It's just gonna sit there and look pretty. Pretty dark, you know, delta soil. Doing nothing. God wants us to let him get into every part of our lives and break it open so he can bear fruit there. Well, you, you may say, well, well what, what does the, the unplowed ground look like? And this is where I like to have fun with this verse and with this whole concept. Uh, the, the unplowed ground is, is areas of our lives that you know, we, we tend to compartmentalize our lives, right? You know, I have my work life, I have my family life, I have my church life, I have my uh, sports and activities life, not much of that in my case. But uh, you know, we, we compartmentalize our lives. And, and, it, and really, when we get down to the, our, our deep, dark, individual lives, we really compartmentalize that stuff. There are places in our lives that we don't want God to look. And you know it. You know it. There are places, and, and, and these, these unplowed fields have interesting names. The field of, it's all about me. The field of that past hurt that I cannot get rid of or give up. That thing that I'm ashamed of that place in my life, that person that I won't forgive. The field of my private little sin that I keep just to me. The field of that talent that I refuse to develop. 
the field of my unavailability to God and others. That field where I always say no to God. The field of feeling like I'm not good enough to serve. And you could take that and run with that idea. If you really sit down and examine your life and you look at the places where you haven't allowed God to get in there, it has a name, and you know what it is. You know, Jesus, when he was preaching about the, the parable of the souls, that's what I believe that's what he wanted. He wanted us to, to sit back and take stock of who we are and how much we've allowed him to become the Lord of our lives. And Hosea got it right. You know, hundreds of years before Jesus ever came on the scene, Hosea got it right. You know, God called, called Hosea to be a prophet to speak to the people of Israel, to call them back to, to call them to repentance, to call them back into relationship with, with the God that they had turned their back on. Their unplowed ground was their faithlessness. You know, and, and, and God challenged Hosea. He he, he said to Hosea, you know, I, I wonder just how much you're willing to say yes to me. And he, if you go back and read the entire book of Hosea, he challenged him. He said, I want you to marry a woman of ill repute. And he did. And the whole idea of that was to demonstrate that God was always faithful even when his bride, his people, were not. And Hosea's wife was completely unfaithful to him over and over again, but he kept on being instructed by God to take her back. And Hosea said yes. Bless his heart. You know, he said yes. You know? And, and it, but it, it makes me think, you know, sometimes God calls us to do some stuff we're not comfortable with. You know, he, he calls us to love people that we wouldn't normally love. He calls us to love difficult people. He calls us, and, and if we say no any of those times, guess what that is? An unplowed field. It's unplowed ground. You know, it, God calls us to do things that, that we're not comfortable with, like standing up in front of folks and, and, and letting you know what I really think. No, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm not uncomfortable with this really that much at all, but I, but I am conscious of the fact that every boss I have in the organization is watching. <laughs> but uh, so uh, you know that, that, that's a little bit unplowed ground for me. But uh, it, you know, if you sit down and and spend some time thinking about it, there are places in your life where you have not let the Word of God penetrate. So what's God do with it when we, when we let him into our unbroken fields? And if you let him into that field of selfishness, that field of it's all about me, I promise there's a much, much better chance that he's going to develop that into a concern for others. If you let him into the field where you've got those hurts that you won't let go of, I promise he can bear fruit there. He can redeem that hurt. Now, I've seen this. I have seen people uh, in, in another ministry that I'm involved in who are, who are hung up with addictions, who when they have let God get into their life and they've let him take that addiction and manage it for them and take it away for them, and then they realize I have a story to tell, the story of God's deliverance in their lives becomes the fruit if you've, you know, there's a real good chance that there are people within the sound of my voice who've experienced some form of abuse over the years or some terrible kind of hurt over the years. If you're one of those folks and you've never let that go and you've never let God give you the healing that you need and deserve, once you let him do that, he's going to give you a story to tell to somebody else who's going through the exact same thing. And you will bear fruit.
with what was at one time unbroken ground. God takes that besetting sin, the field of, the, of that sin, our private little sin, he destroys it and frees us once and for all. He gives us opportunities to bless others with the talents that we've always just kept to ourselves. He helps us understand that our time belongs to him and enables us to be able to, to, to be available and to do whatever he's called us to do. You've heard this before, but God doesn't ever call you to do something unless he's also going to equip you to do it. He's going to give you the patience you need to love that difficult person. And nurses and, and frontline staff members, you know who I'm talking about. Some of these folks that, that we, we care for every day can be difficult. They're at a difficult point in their lives. You know, they're, they're vulnerable. They're hurting. Some of our, our patients, some of our families, they're, they're facing uh, a dark place in their lives. They need us to come in there and be the light for them. That's what God calls us to do if we're willing to, to let him do it in us. So he replaces, uh, he takes that field of no's and he turns it into a faith that always says yes. He replaces our insecurity with the confidence that comes from serving almighty God and going forward in his strength. So how does he do all these things? With that seed that we talked about in the first point, with his word. When God's word really penetrates the soil of our heart and when we finally allow him to break open every field, his word showers righteousness on us and changes everything. So what's the condition of your heart today? If you've never invited Jesus into your heart, I can tell you, you've got that hard soil. And there's something you can do about it. It's not hard. You come talk to me or one of the other chaplains afterwards and we'll introduce you. We'll introduce you to the master gardener who can take your life and turn it completely around, turn it inside out. If you already know him, then my question for you is, how long is it, has it been since you have really let the Lord get into every corner of your life? How long has it been since you have let him be the Lord of every aspect of your life? Every one of those compartments that I talked about earlier, work, family, home, church, leisure time. Hosea says, it's time to seek the Lord. And Jesus says, he who has ears, let him hear. Give God your heart today. Let him break it open so that you can bear fruit. You know, Pastor, Pastor Terry emphasized it's all about Jesus. My final question for you is this. Can you say that about your life? Are you all about Jesus? Let him get in there and break open that unplowed ground. God bless y'all. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that it is seed of imaginable power, unimaginable power. Lord, I pray for myself and for each one of us in all the days of our lives, Lord, that we have left on this earth, that you would, uh, you would encourage us to avail ourselves of the power of your word. Lord, help us to just immerse ourselves in the truth of your word and to apply it to our lives. Help us, Lord, to commit ourselves fully to you and to your service. Lord, you have given every one of us here at Baptist an incredible opportunity every, every day to make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, I pray that not a one of us would take that lightly. Lord, I pray that you would use each of us every day to be the light for those who are in dark places. Lord, help us to go forward with the love that we've received from you, to share that love extravagantly and deeply with everyone that you send to us. Bless my friends and family here today, Lord. Remind us that we are your family. Remind us, Lord, that we need to follow your lead in all that we do. 
Break open our unplowed ground, Lord, and help us to bear fruit. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Anthony may have some announcements, but I wanted to, to bust in and just say that he was right about one thing. Uh, his bosses were watching. <laughs> but we've been watching a long time, and we're very grateful for this man and the leadership of our system. And, you know, with a mission that mirrors a threefold ministry of Christ of healing, preaching, and teaching, uh, I know, like me, you're grateful that uh, it, that mission has the support and the watch care of a man like Anthony Burdett. Aren't you grateful? Thank you, Anthony. Do you have announcements for us? Just be back next month. Uh, we, we've got a lineup of pastors still coming in, so come on back next month. I promise you'll have a, uh, a good speaker next month, too. So, uh. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>